live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of the Intermediate Trading Module number three, an incredible overview of technical analysis to help each and every one of you grow financially, prosper with abundance and achieve financial freedom through en life enrichment with trading. What is going on, folks? Type in a one if you can hear me and see me okay. If I see me, I mean see the screen. I can't turn on my webcam. I'm just on the treadmill, nothing special over here. Trevor, what's going on? I get a bunch of ones. Edgar Allen Bros in the building. Perfect. Farah, how are you, Miss Farah? Judy, Sybil, Eve. JV, Jeff Kerr, evening, evening. So many good names right now in the chat, man. This is just, this is the best part of my day. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> well, my friends, you all know why we are here. You know why I am here. A lot of people have asked me, why are you doing this for free? I've had some subliminal sales pitches and that's cool, but nothing over the top. My mission is to enrich lives, ladies and gentlemen. And we do that in real life trading by guiding many people towards fully achieving and understanding financial freedom. That is our goal, that is our approach, that is our thoughts and extremely excited to see how we can all grow together. Type in a two if you resonate with that mission statement. That is what I want us to do. There's all the twos, fantastic. The goal of this particular module, my dear friends, is I wanna review the strongest and most frequent chart patterns and candle patterns and discuss how to trade them effectively and profitably. Provide mistakes that you might be making and show you how to correct them. This is a really powerful goal. That's gonna be my objective in this module. As I mentioned in the last program, when I was initially building this slide, folks, man, I was throwing everything in the book. I was taking the whole bus. I was like, what does Jeremy know? And I just was like, bang, 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 bang. Look at all this stuff. It's, there's like 400 slides. I was like, man, number one, it's gonna be a really long class. Number two, it's gonna be overwhelming. There's gonna be a lot of content here. I was like, I feel like I could just teach people all kinds of stuff, but I feel like people just wanna make money. How can I get people to not knowing a lot to knowing a little bit to be able to make money as quick as possible. Kelly says, I already use your gap and go strategy made 200 bucks. That's what I'm talking about, Kelly. All right, all right, all right. Type in a nine if you made some money today out there in the markets. Today was insane. Wow, today was a good day. Robin made money, Manoir made money, Ellis, Richie, Moy, Thomas, Kelly, Jay, Linder, Ken, Nathan, Ariel, Kalen, John, Jeff, so I can't even keep up with them all. Woo, this is good. Let's just keep doing it. Let's keep making money. Let's keep paying off debts. Let's keep contributing to our community. Let's continue to be good stewards of our money and help other people. And then of course, enrich some lives. Here's a little bit about me. I like to have new information each time. Today is 29 miles with one day left to complete my hardest physical challenge to date which is called the Calendar Club. A lot of you ask why I'm running and moving so much all the time. I just love physical challenges. This one is the one that I've never done in my whole life and it is not easy. <laughs> this is so hard, but I got it. Today and tomorrow, I'm either gonna die or I'm gonna finish. That's the way this is gonna work. I also love investing in cryptocurrencies and real estate. And also you guys have already grabbed my book, right? If you haven't, make sure you know, I got myself a book. I wrote it, it's really good. I think you'll like it. If you have not, snag it. Money grows on trees. You'll like it, Kelly. Rob Thomas says, no point in dying after running this far. Exactly, man. Richie and Manoir says, how do we get it? Amazon. And then anywhere else they sell books. Type in Amazon, type in money grows on trees. Or you can use that link that my boy Matt DeLong just posted in the chat pane, either one. My hobbies include insanely hard physical challenges. 
I love playing poker. I am horrible at it. I lose every time, but it's fun. Rock climbing, traveling, and I love running on the beach. So yeah, a little bit about me. Okay, and just as a reminder, if you want these slides, along with all the other cool information and some great stuff on Real Life Training website, text Newsom. Now, here's what's funny, and I should have made this a little bit more clear. Don't text me this number. <laughs> I had 95 people text me because they have my phone number. You guys all have my phone number. I give it everywhere. It's on the internet, all over the place. So people texted me this number. <laughs> so don't, don't do that. Text this number and these characters to that number. So text Newsome, the word Newsome to 55444 or text the word Newsome to this number and you'll get the slides. Hoff says, are all the recordings for these classes gonna be on the dashboard? Yes, sir. There will be under the intermediate program. We're gonna be editing them, chopping them up, pre-production, making them look really pretty. So that is correct. But give us a little bit of time on that. Uh, otherwise, in the meantime, the entire live recording will be on our YouTube channel. Make sense? All right. Fantastic. Here we go. Let's dive in. This is where we are. Module three. The best chart patterns to focus on. That's the name of this module. Initially, it was called all the chart patterns The Jeremy knows forever. Here's 900 of them. That's what it was originally called. And I was like, nah. Let's just, let's just get the real stuff that makes sense. Let's get down to it. All right, so here we go. Menoir says, how do I get the candlesticks? Module one. Menoir, have you gone to our YouTube channel and clicked on videos? Or Jason Smith and or Matt DeLong, we give you the video, but that's how you do it. These are all on our YouTube channel for free for the entire world to access anytime. But Matt will also send it to you in the chat pane. So all is good. It'll be there. All we're here to do is help out and give greatness for the world. What's the difference between chart patterns and candlestick patterns? Well, let's talk about it. Chart patterns and candlestick patterns are visual patterns created by human sentiment. It requires multiple candlesticks are needed to create chart patterns, right? So if you have two or more candlesticks, you can have a candlestick pattern, but you need multiple candlesticks to create a chart pattern. Chart patterns are created by candles. So candles have sentiment, and therefore, if you have multiple candles, you have multiple reading, readings of sentiment. Nancy says, trees and forest. Bingo. I think there's a saying that you can't see the trees because of all the leaves on the ground. I think that's the way the saying goes. So you got to really dial in on the sentiment. Chart patterns and candlestick patterns can occur on any time frame. However, the larger the time frame, generally, the stronger the pattern. All right, pretty basic stuff. <laughs> now, this is a weird random quote from one of my early, early classes. The mashed potato dance. Why do I have this in here? What the heck does that mean? What we're gonna be going through, I'm gonna be giving some names. I'll be coming up with some, ter oh, they're not my terms. I'm gonna be giving some definitions, some terms, some descriptions for these things, chart patterns, candlestick patterns, it at some point does not really matter what they are called, okay? You can call them anything. You can call them the mashed potato dance. <laughs> it truly is irrelevant. It can be called a double bottom. You can call it a pennant pattern. You can call it a stair step pattern. You can call it a flag. You can draw it however you want. What matters is can you look at it and determine what people are feeling. That's really the key. Can you look at the chart and go, yep, yeah, these people are afraid. These people are scared. These people are happy. These people are excited. 
this is happening. There's some rest. There is some consolidation. There's some pause. This is building pressure. So at some point, the names are irrelevant because you got to realize these names might be different in different languages. This is an international program. There could be people from all over the world learning different languages, learning different things. So whatever I call them, you can call them something. I say this in class all the time. Hey guys, this looks like a stair step pattern, but it could be a flag pattern. So this is my thoughts on the sentiment. There is often an industry accepted jargon, which I'll be using. However, I've seen and heard many different names and different terms for different patterns. Type it on one if that kind of makes sense, if you get it. All right, so again, we can call this the mashed potato dance. It's the name is irrelevant. When you go to other places to learn your education and you read books and you read and go to videos and you go to seminars and you get the really sleazy sales pitches all the time, as that happens, they'll come up with special names and really special characters and they'll call a chart pattern something special and unique just to their group of clients so that you feel like you're missing out on something. It's all about the sentiment. If they don't explain to you the why behind why the pattern works and how it's formed and who trades it, the name is irrelevant. All right, so you guys all get the point, cool. Also, <laughs> since I'm making fun of other education companies for a moment, one thing that they do poor job at, in my opinion, is they teach you everything. When I was going through school, when I was a young kid, all I wanted to do was learn how to make money. That was it. If I was going through algebra, I would raise my hand and ask the teacher, how does this help me make more money? I wanted to understand time, money, how it flows, its energy, its respect, its vibrational frequency. I wanted to get it. So this course, this whole program is not designed to overwhelm you and show you how much I may or may not know or show anyone how much I may or may not know. I want you to help. I want this course to be designed to help traders consistently make money from the markets. It is possible. I promise. It might not be every day. Well, it's definitely not going to be every day. <laughs> and it might not be every week. And it might not be every month. But it is actually possible to create cash flow, to create income, to make money trading the stock market. I just asked a moment ago, type in a nine, and over 100 nines came in. And there's only 109 people here. So it's a pretty high ratio of winners. So therefore, we're gonna be specializing on some chart patterns. The market rewards the specialist. Real life trading is all about the specialization and I'm going to provide some winning tips, tricks, strategies, and approaches and not just show off tons of slides and hundreds of patterns. You guys dig me? You cool on that? Alex says, you wanted to know the algebra of dollars. That is exactly right. <laughs> yes. Now, over seven years ago, when I did one of my very first presentations on the stock market online, I mentioned there was a gentleman out there. There was a trader, there was a person that I knew of who specialized in one chart pattern, one singular chart pattern. And the only thing this trader did was focus on this one particular chart pattern. And he played one particular chart pattern. Guess what that chart pattern was? It was the double bottom. And guess who that trader was? It was me. I'm really good at these things, guys. And I want you to be really good at these things too. That's why there are so many traders absolutely murdering April is because these patterns came up all across the board. And for this particular month right now, they're everywhere. You can make all the money you want with this one chart pattern. Get the hang of it, understand how it works, practice it, become a specialist, dial in, type in a three if you think this works on any time frame.
There's a lot of threes because it's true. Type in a seven if you realize it does not work all the time. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm repeating that frequently is because I can get people hyped up real easy. <laughs> it's one of my skills. I don't want you to think that I'm an all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful person. I am not. I'm a normal human being. I realize that when we're taking trades, there's going to be risk appropriated. There's going to be possibilities that you're going to lose. But if you start nailing certain patterns and just getting it, whew, you can be hot. You can be really hot. So the double bottom is a chart pattern. Works on any time frame. And there are a few different variations of this pattern. If you need help practicing seeing a, lot, um, a double bottom, try using a line chart. So if you are just really hesitant, like you don't initially see a double bottom, begin using a line chart. Line charts will help you. So let's look at both of these charts that are in front of us right now and ask this question. Do you think double bottoms are also fractal patterns? What do you think? The answer is, yes, they are. What do I mean by fractal patterns? Check this out. Look at this tiny double bottom right there. Type in a six if you did not see that. And it's okay if you didn't, it's not a big deal. But that is a double bottom, just a small one, just a very quick one. It happened on a different time frame on a different fractal. Now here's what's really interesting. Look at how that double bottom plays out. We have a lower high that came in, stock goes up, we come down, we retest the neckline of the double bottom, and then we bounced perfectly off of that price. I mean, to the penny. This was a random stock that I pulled up, by the way. I don't even remember what stock this is. It was so random, purely random. Now, check out how the exact same pattern does pretty much the exact same thing over here. You get a ginormous double bottom. This time you have a higher low and you get this massive bullish move up, AKA massive bullish move up, massive bullish move up, AKA massive bullish move up. And then it retests and where does it retest to? The exact neckline of the double bottom and bounced perfectly off of that price. Bloop. Look at that. I mean, that is so nice because there's so many things you could have done there. Like you could have zoomed in, you could have day traded, you could have swing, you could have popped in, did some options, some put sales. It's magic. I mean, look how clean this line chart is. You can see it just perfectly coming down into that neckline area, throwing a nice little lower shadow. Type in a four if you think you could have potentially gone long there. Now, again, it could depend on the time frame. It can depend on your strategy. It can depend on all kinds of things if you want on this trade or not. Also, I know I'm making you guys type on the, on the keyboard a lot. Type in a 17 if you see a very nice high wave candle that could have helped you play this neckline trade as well. I'll point it out to you, don't fret, don't be sad. But there it is right there. Boom. High wave candle. Where did the high wave candle occur? Right at the neckline. Right at the top, right at the little peak of this little level. Right there. So your entry, you could have recognized, okay, this thing is at a neckline. It's a possible double bottom with a higher low. I'm going to get in there with a stop loss there, and I'm going to crush it, make some bill paying money. And I'm going to go to California first class and hang out with my girlfriend or my boyfriend or my wife or my husband or my best friend or whatever. Hang out with you. That's right. I can hang out with you. Richie says, do you always look for high wave candles in this situation? No, but if they show up, I'll play them. Because here's the thing. 
what if you think you find a double bottom and you're like, yeah, I have a high tendency to think that these things could pull back and retrace into the double bottom neckline. And you happen to see a high wave candle up here. And you thought to yourself, man, I'm pretty sure Newsom said something about the extent of if you have a lot of bull candles trade up in a row, you might get a little bit of a pullback and you see a nice little high wave candle really far away from the neckline. Based on this candle, do you think that there could have been a chance that you played it short back into that neckline based on that candle? I'm not saying you had to, but is there a chance? Sure. How wild is that? One pattern has so much applications. So what we're gonna talk about now is my favorite double bottom. David says, do you find they work better with the second low is lower than the first? Getting there, my man, I'm getting there. But I'm glad you asked because that means that I created these slides perfectly because <laughs> we're going into that right now. What I like to look for is I really, really like the lower low double bottom for multiple reasons. This is my favorite one. This is the one that generally works the fastest, but also has the biggest retest and is the hardest to spot. The lower low double bottom means that, well, should be kind of self-explanatory. The low comes in lower and it's like a sloping double bottom. These are very fun because I generally try to get in somewhere over here. And then once I get a close with a neckline, I hold, wait for the retest, and then I can move my stop up. And it's really, really fun and exciting. Or I can add to the trade. Jose Smith the third says divergence. Mm -hmm. There's some really cool indicators that can be used to find these and to help you kind of define if it's a divergence play or not. I do have videos on divergence. But the thing is, I like them. Generally, when I'm playing a lower low, we talked about this in the most recent module, I'm looking for a lot of volume to come in. Reason I'm looking for the volume to come in is because why? All of the news piling in. It helps me spot, oh, this trend might be ending. I know. Doesn't mean it's going to end, it just means that it could. A bunch of volume comes in and I can look at the chart and go, man, this thing has already had a pretty strong move down. Is it really gonna continue higher? Or sorry, is it really gonna continue lower with that much volume? So what do I normally do? I normally wait a day or two. Jeremy, are you saying you don't get in at the exact bottom? I wish, <laughs> right? I wish I'm getting in there down there. That'd be really cool. Am I getting in there though, realistically ever? Mm, generally not. Like 99% of the time, no, I'm not getting in there. So where do I get in? I normally wait a day or two and I kind of assess the candles a little bit. That particular candle, I think most of you know, if you've read my candlestick ebook or done any kind of candle research at all, Morning Star Reversal. Not the greatest one, but it is. You have the lower highs, you have a Morning Star, and I could kind of make the argument that this is a spinning top candle. We talked about spinning top candles recently, right? That's the spinning top candle. So you could have played it entry here, stop loss there. Or you could have played an entry where you're getting in bullish above the high of the second candle with a little bit of a lower stop. Well, Jeremy, how do you trade it normally? I'll tell you. Here's generally what I do. When this candle comes in, does it trap some bears, yes or no? And the answer is yes, it traps some bears, definitely. How do we know that? Because that candle closed above all the bear volume. So there are people losing money on this position. There are people trapped and scared and terrified and frustrated and upset. So normally what I do is when this candle closes, like at the close of market, 
I get in bullish on that trade, shares, calls, whatever. I get in bullish on that day. Now, if I miss it or if I'm doing scans or I'm not by my computer and I find those patterns after the fact, then I watch them the next day for some day trade opportunities, right? A gap up, some type of continuation higher, especially if it has an upper shadow and it gaps above the previous high of the day. I look to go long. So normally what I do is I'm waiting for my big volume bear candle and I get in above the candle if it takes out and closes above that high. I'm oftentimes assessing how many candles in a row have come in before I'm getting in. Because if it's more than three, so three plus, if it's more than three, I'm not going to get in bullish. So let's hypothetically say that I did not get in on this particular trade on this candle, this candle, this candle, or this candle. Am I going to get in on the next day? Four green candles in a row? No, I'm not. So where do I get in? Or how should you, how should we play this trade? And the answer is on the retest. Okay, the retest of what? The neckline. All right, where's the neckline? And the answer is that first bearish candle. That high, the little pivot right there. So I'm looking at getting in on a pullback right here. That would be my play. And that's it. So if I did not catch a breakout early in the, in the move, then I get in on the pullback. What if I did catch the breakout? Do I generally hold through the retracement into the neckline? And the answer is yes, I do. I do that all the time, especially for day trades, all the time, very frequently. I hold through that retracement. And then once that retracement comes in, I will end up increasing my stop to lose small. What's really interesting is you guys can't see what time frame that is or what chart it is. And the cool part is it doesn't really matter. This just so happens to be a two minute chart and this actually was a day trade. Now type in a 19 into the chat pane for me. If you see a nice little high wave candle after the retest came in. And I'll point them out to you. I like high wave candles because they're very indecisive. That's why I focus on them in our previous class. Here's a high wave candle. The next candle is an inside candle. So when that inside candle comes in, I'm already going to have an order to get in bullish above, stop below. You can see, never happens. Didn't get in. No big deal. But then this candle comes in. Let me do that with a different color. I'm going to do that with green. Is this candle a high wave candle, yes or no? And the answer is, yeah, it is. Cool deal. So you got a high wave candle. I'm getting in again above, above that high, stop below that low. And nice little pop. Riddle me this, ladies and gentlemen, based on what we talked about just yesterday, would we sell something right there? And the answer is yes. Why? Because it's a new high. When you're taking trades, you get it, get out at new highs. How much? Up to you. Up to what you're trying to accomplish with the trade. It's really your decision. Uh, it's normally a small size, normally a partial position, unless I need to lock in a gain, in which I will. But I'll kind of start scaling out. Now, if I do that and I see all this start to happen, am I going to panic? And the answer is not specifically, because again, I still know this is the neckline and double bottoms and all neckline patterns love to have what's called, you ready for this? I've never really heard this term anywhere in any other class, a short retest and a long retest. <clears throat> this happens a lot on breakouts or anything with a very obvious price level. 
if a neckline is very obvious, a support resistance line is very obvious, if everyone and their mom can see the price that you're looking at, you oftentimes will get um, a retest. Are you about to leave? Love you, man. Take care. Drive safe. Thank you. Give you a hug. My, ne my nephew's about to leave. He's, uh, he's going to head out for a little bit. Take care, man. Drive safe. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> Thanks, man. Adios. Richie says, my man, Zach. That's right. Okay. So Kelly says, so you don't have a target price, but you move your stop. Good question. So I normally don't immediately have a target price, but I will sell when we make a new high and I'll lock in some profits if I'm bullish. And if I'm bearish, I get out with a new low. And then I start slowly moving my, uh, slowly moving my stops. Generally, when I first get into a trade, I don't have a target in place. I almost always have an OCO order or a OCA or some type of what's called a conditional, depending on your broker. I will have something that will have a stop loss and target in place to trigger automatically. And oftentimes what I'll do, Kelly, is I'll kind of just drag them on the screen to whatever looks normal. But most of the time, my targets are based on my time frame. Because for day trading, I'm going to get in and get out much quicker, obviously. I'm there to create cash flow and to generate money from the market daily. Not that it happens every day, but sometimes it can happen for me and I get profitable. Swing trades, right? It's days to weeks, month maybe. And then longer term investments, I'm just holding on a lot longer. So I have like a target where I'd like to get out at some point, but I generally just kind of trail my stops and kind of feel out where I'm at for the day. Great question. Now, my goal on any double bottom is to either buy the retest or to get in with a close above these bear candles. On 83% of my double bottoms, I wait for a close and then I do a limit buy. 83% of the time, which is a pretty high level. So here's an example. Let's go through an example. Move this over here. Again, just a random double bottom that I peeled out, I pulled off of somewhere. I mean, it's not random, it's an actual chart, but you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's go through some practices. Where does Jeremy get in? Obviously, I get in right there. Any questions? <laughs> All right. So let's talk about where I would likely get in on this particular trade and kind of just walk through what I like to do, what I like to try to accomplish, and what I like to see. So I mentioned I like to get in above the high with a close above the most recent bearish candle. Now, I also mentioned in the previous thing that I like to see volume come in when it makes a new low. Would you say that that's an increase in volume? I'd have to say the answer is yes. Is this a new low? Yes, it is. Does it look like a hammer candle? Yes, it does. Now, riddle me this, my friends. Am I getting in with a close above the high of that candle right there? So this candle I'm pointing to with a red arrow. Am I getting embarrassed there? The answer is no. No, I'm not. Why? Because that's not the most bearish candle. Right? I want to close above the high of the most bearish candle. It is a good close. Yes, bears are trapped. And I do like that level. But what I'm going to do is I'm waiting for a close above this candle. Because that's a pretty bearish candle. So when this candle comes in, am I going to get in with a close above there? And the answer is yes, I would. Okay, so why? Well, how many bullish candles are in a row at that point? Two. <clears throat> so am I missing the boat? Am I late to the party? Like, no, man, it's just, I mean, just two. So we're really just, we're just going. If it had been four candles in a row, would I be getting in with a close? The answer is no. If it's three or more, you know, more than three, I'm looking to get in on a pullback 
And I would have set up a limit buy to get in here. That would have been my order. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that we would have never pulled back to that price at any point in time ever again. You would never have had a shot to get in at the retest of this candle because it just ran without you and there was no opportunity to get in on the pullback of the retest of that big bearish volume candle. Was it one time at any point where you could have had a limit buy waiting for an entry on that particular candle? <laughs> Type of one if, if I got the sarcasm across. I'm really bad at sarcasm normally, but all right, good, 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 good. Jose says, it seems double bottoms come from morning star reversals. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I can. Um, I, I do love my morning star reversals. This particular morning star reversal, let's rate it on a one to 10 scale. 10 being perfect, one being looks like me in the fourth grade. What would you guys think? I'll give it a eh, 5.921, 5.921, it's okay. Second candle's a shaved top. So we talked about shaved top candles. They like to retrace a lot. You do have a bearish volume hammer here, which is kind of cool. This is a little bit of a bearish candle, but it's really the third candle is pretty low, pretty far away from the first one. The hammer is not really that indecisive. I mean, it definitely trapped some people. You certainly had some people short. I'm just not blown away by that candle. It's okay. It's all right. It's not bad. But that's why I would have waited to get in above the high of the close of that candle. That would have been that candle right there. Now, obviously, everyone already knows where I'm going to be putting my stop. Okay. That should be very, very obvious. Stop's going to go there. So true or false? Regardless of what type of trade this is, but specifically if it's a day trade or swing trade, am I going to exit some type of partial up here? Right? Would you guys all agree that's some new highs? The answer is yes, I would. And then, and obviously you can tell down here, this is a day trade. So I'm not trying to scare anybody. This is obviously a day trade because it's intraday levels. But based on that, do you think at that point I would have waited for a pivot to come in, retest the neckline of this double bottom, which is again, that most bearish candle and then move my stop higher? And the answer is yes. If I'm patient enough, that's exactly what I will do. And that's what I try to do. That's what I strive to do. Now you might say, well, Newsom, is it the neckline of this chart pattern right here? And I would not disagree, right? Double bottoms can have multiple necklines, just like zebras can have multiple spots. Right? So this is a definite neckline. And another neckline would simply be a potential, one that you could consider, an area that would be important right here. And that's based off of the big bearish candle there and the bounce from that level right there. Okay, so riddle me this. If I'm in the moment and it's a day trade and I'm trading the green line as my neckline, would I then have exited most likely my entire position here and would I have moved my stop when we retest the neckline on these instances, yes or no? And the answer is yes. That would have been what I would have done, hopefully. <laughs> I say that, that's, that's my goal. So when I mentioned earlier that every pattern that has a neckline approach or a very, very strong support or resistance, you're gonna have a short retest and you're gonna have a longer retest. The short one's a very classic bloop, right? Very, very easy. And then the long one's gonna come way later. That's the one that scares everyone. That's the one that everyone gets really terrified for. And then you can start making some pivots happen. I try my best to hold through both of those. Not all the time, but every now and then. Because at some point, I mean, could this have done this? 
and just pulled a moon Lambo? The answer is of course. And those are the ones that you wanna be in when that happens. All right, here's the higher low double bottom. These are even easier to spot. This one is perfect. This higher low is just comical. This one was too easy. And you guys all see why. Higher low. When did you know it was a higher low? Good question. We would not have known until gap action. It gapped above, it cleared the recent pivots. True or false, everyone who's shorted in here is horrendously losing money. And the answer is of course. So in this particular instance, when that gap comes in, would you guys say that this green line is the neckline, yes or no? And the answer would be absolutely. Now, based on what I just mentioned, could you also have the neckline here above the high of the most bearish candle? And the answer is yes. You could have played or considered or prospected or speculated both of those particular levels. Right? Cool, okay. So it makes sense. And again, in this situation, where would you have entered? You most likely, most likely would have tried to enter somewhere over here. Okay, that would have been the preferable thing to do, somewhere over there, because this is a very strong gap and go. We're gonna talk about that soon. You get a very, very nice high wave candle. We start retracing, you get a nice, this, this, that's not a knife, this is a knife. How would you guys rate this morning star reversal? On a one to 10. Bear candle, bull candle, bull candle. How's that one? Yeah, that's like a strong nine. 9.9873 repeating into the universe forever. That one is a monster. Why is it a monster? The highs, right? Both candles have upper highs. The middle candle is a small indecision spinning top candle. It's already in the bullish trend. It happens after a gap. Both candles have upper, upper shadows. The highs of these candles are almost the exact same, gives you a clear entry. It's only two white candles in a row, so you have plenty of room to go. Risk rewards, good. Double bottom, it's happening after double. I mean, how many things do you want to stack? How many reasons do you want to get in on that? Beep, beep, beep. Load the boat. Is this the time? It's a great setup. Any guesses on what company this is? I wonder if I can remember. It's not in my notes, I promise. Let me see if I can track that down. Let's see if I can remember. I think it was Coke. Coke. I think it's Coke. Mm, must not have been Coke. No. Nope. Oh, well, I lost it forever. No idea what that double bottom is. But it's a good one. JD? No, it's not JD. It's not JD. Huh. I really thought it was Coca-Cola. Oh, well. Richie says, what stops you from getting on the big bearish candle before the gap up? It's a good question, Richie. So at that point, was there any signal specifically to have gone long? I mean, is there anything that really says, yeah, you should probably buy here? Not really. That serves one answer to your question. The other one is if I'm trying to play a double bottom, we already know that there's a support here. So how do we know double bottoms are made? Well, stock will either come down, come up, come down and bounce, or 
come down, come up, come down and bounce. Or do what this one did, which is come down, come down, and then really bounce. The thing is, this happened with earnings. And I don't personally swing trade over earnings. Earnings are kind of a gamble for the most part. That's as close as you can get to gambling in the stock market. Not really, but that, that's a version. Earnings, you're just kind of like, I don't know what's going to happen. And earnings happen. So you get this really, really strong gap that just kind of randomly occurs. And that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. And then the double bottom, there was, there was no sign of it yet. There was no... Let's say the gap did not occur. So let's kind of go through that. Let's say the gap never actually happened. When this is occurring, I would need it to close above this candle for me to go, okay, we might be having a higher low double bottom. Does that make sense, Richie? So I was like, if, if at that point, I obviously don't know it's a double bottom, we would need to close above that candle. And if we get that close, then I can go, all right, cool. Looks like we're going to get a little bit of a double bottom here. Now, this one is the higher low double bottom, but this is, this is Coke. But uh, specifically, you can all agree that it's also a little bit higher low and there's actually a lower low in this one too. There's all kinds of double bottoms. That's why, I made, that's why this made it so strong. So number one, you have this one, right? That was one. And then you got this one, two. Now again, you could say that's an inverted head and shoulders. That's fine, and I'm okay with that. But realistically, I'm just seeing it as two double bottoms back to back, right? I'm a specialist at double bottoms. I'm really good at these chart patterns. I can make a lot of money off of double bottoms. You can make a lot of money off of double bottoms. We can call it whatever we want. Type in a two, if you can call this the mashed potato dance. Does not matter the name. Can we look at the sentiment and go, man, people are losing money right here. Man, people are scared. Man, people are excited. Type in a nine if you can clearly see that this red line is the neckline and that's where you're going to get in. Bullish. Now, here's a good question. This is where all of this stuff starts to pile together, my friends. We're talking about piling the odds. Let's find out how much you all have remembered. Why would I not get in with a close on that candle? Since I literally just said a moment ago that I'm gonna get in with a close with the neckline. If it's really, why am I not gonna get in with a close there? Let's see if you guys can remember. Edward Lynn is gonna be making a lot of money. Whoo, Scott McKay. Scott McKay already makes a lot of money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Scott McKay is rich. Man, that guy's rich. Right, Scott? Love you, man. Here's the thing. It's a long day candle. So on a long day candle, it just so happens that a 50% retracement is around the neckline anyway. It's pretty much already at the neckline. So you get a long day candle, closing of the neckline. I'm not going to buy at the close because it's a long day candle, even though normally I would buy the close or the close above all these highs. Since it's a long day candle, I'm going to set up a pullback to get in halfway. Type in a nine if you would have gotten filled on that pullback. Yep, you guys all know you would have gotten filled and it would have worked out very, very well. And there's a lot of other things in here that work out too, right? And you start piling all this together. This is a bullish retest gap. This is a bullish gap and go. The candle that I'm pointing to with the orange line is also a candle that I talk about in all of my videos at some point or another, the one white soldier. So you have like three or four different things coming in together. You got multiple double bottoms. You got multiple gaps. You got multiple volumes. You got huge candles. You got close above the neckline. You got, you're, it's out of support. Plus it's Coca-Cola. That's the sign of the boat. John, stick around for module five. Mm-hmm. 
John says, can you explain the difference between a gap and go and a retest gap? Remember, the best way to teach someone something is sprinkling things they don't know and then tell them you're going to tell them later and then you actually tell them. <laughs> so module five, we're talking about gaps. All right. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, does this work on Forex, you think? Ladies and gentlemen, of course it does. Why would it not? How many double bottoms can you find in this pattern? I can find like 940. How many can you find? 940 might be a stretch. I might be exaggerating. I tend to exaggerate from time to time. Let's go. Here's one. This is a fractal one. It's a little bit of a smaller one. Here's one. Perfect. So good. Would have crushed that one. Here's a little bit of a fractal one. So smaller. Here's one. Beautiful. Here's one. Absolutely stunning. Here's one. Would have been a fractal. Tiny, tiny, tiny one. Here's one. Oh, and then you have the higher low double bottom that came in right here. Boom, 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 boom. Look at the volume. Whoo, Betsy. Someone's making money. I mean, there is so many stacks on this one. Oh, I don't even trade Forex. I know that's a lot of money. Look at this. Bang, bang, bang. New low, volume comes in. Morning, sorry, reversal. Pop up. Evening, sorry, reversal. We come down, we come back up and look at the pressure building on this pattern. I mean, your entry could have been right there. Look at this pressure. Look at this pattern. What's this pattern called? We're going to talk about that in just a moment. I mean, look at how clean that pressure is. That breakout would have been so simple. Mm -hmm. If you love what we're kind of doing so far, and you really like this chart analysis, candlestick analysis, do me a favor. Go to reallifetrading.com. Go to online courses and then click the back trading course. If you have not taken this, please do so. It is one of the greatest things I have ever created. And I say that as humbly as I possibly can. It's really, really, really good. It's what we're doing right now. And I do it for six hours straight without stopping. So in the recordings that you'll watch, you will get to see me do it nonstop for six hours. And you can watch it over and over and over. Check this out. I'll send this to you guys in the chat. It I mean, honestly, guys, it's really, really good. It is. It's solid. Look at all these people that got their mind blown. And then look, I scroll down, did again. Now, this is my boy, Greg. He's one of my coaching students. He's young. He's a professional bowler. And he paid for the back trade marathon in the very next day, one trade. So... Again, if you want it, it's $199. It's a really, really good program. Make sure to check it out. You'll like it a lot. If you like the candles, if you like technical analysis, if you like all of this that I'm doing so far, snag that. Here's some more double bottoms. Now, this is on futures. Type in a five if you think this stuff works on futures. By the way, I don't know if you heard him earlier, Zachary, who just came in and he's about to leave and head out. He's 16 years old. He's about to get funded in his top step account two weeks into staying with me. He's about to get a $50,000 trading account. He is $500 away from getting funded. Does anybody wanna guess what his main strategy is? Yeah, double bottoms. That's it. But Har says, can I move in with you? <laughs> you can. It's just expensive. But you can. I work with traders all the time. It's not cheap, though. <laughs> Marlon Brandbro. <laughs> you guys are too much. 
I'm trying to have a professional presentation here, guys. Oh, you're amazing. Marlon Brand, bro. Oh, this is so good. So good. You're amazing, guys. Thank you. Let's talk about let's talk about the double bottoms that I see here on the one minute chart. Now, this one right here is sheer money. Type in a seven if that is a lower low double bottom. All right, clear as day. I mean, you could have messed up that one if you tried to. Like if you didn't make money with that pattern, you're, you don't have a pulse. I saw a 190 year old ficus tree take that tray to make money. A 190 year old ficus. They don't even have brains. It's a tree and they made money on that candle pattern, that chart pattern. Type in a 14 if you see this fractalization of a double bottom. This is on a one minute chart on future. So it's about as small as you can get, but that would have looked really nice on a tick chart. Could have carved out some profits there. Bloop, 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 bloop. That's a really nice one. And then type in a 44 into the chat pane if you see the most obvious double bottom of all time, just yelling at you. This, this chart pattern says, do you want to make money? Come on, Amy. Are we getting in bullish? Come on now. Whew. Man, that is good. Now, all right, let's be honest. When would I have known that, that was going to happen? So obviously we would have known that there's a support here. Let me try to draw this line again. I'm freehanding on my trackpad right now. That sounds like a nice rap song. I need to write some lyrics to that. Freehand and on my trackpad. We know at this point, there's a really, really good support level at that, at, that, at that area. When this comes in, you have a morning star reversal on a one minute chart. At that point in time, you have to start saying, yeah, this thing could turn into a double bottom. Now, of course, if you're wondering, wait a minute, Newsom. Are you saying that all of this is a double bottom? God, come on now. Hold on. <laughs> Don't you dare do that to me because that's going to take me into a rabbit hole. Man, fractalizations are the coolest thing of all time. Anyway, <laughs> type in an M to the chat pane if you were mind blown by that right there. It's really cool to start seeing these. And don't worry, we're going to talk about them in just a moment. This is going to be a great class, great program, great course, all for free too. Oh my gosh. So you have this morning star reversal pattern that comes in right here. And then once you get this support, oh snap. When you get that support that comes in, that level, this level over here, you don't really know that this is gonna turn into a double bottom until approximately there. But once this candle shows up, that one right there, once that candle shows up, this is the second white one in a row. It's at the neckline yelling at you. I'm a 190 year old ficus tree and I'm about to take this trade. I mean, look at that double, look at this inside candle doji. It is yelling at you. It's a tree. <laughs> it's incredible. Kelly says, one minute chart is very fast for a starter to recognize. I agree. No, it's quick. It's quick. This is that exact same chart on a five minute time frame. La D says, I have about eight ficus trees out of my office yelling at me right now. Mm. Sean says, what's your rules for taking the breakout versus the retest? So Sean, that's literally the first hour of that back trading marathon. That's the whole first hour. But the answer is you got to start blending in. Is it breaking out of an accumulation phase? Are bears trapped? How many candles are in a row? Remember, if I was going to take a breakout right here, 
I would take a breakout because you have a double bottom forming. You actually have a micro double bottom, which is the one that we looked at a moment ago. Here's the micro double bottom right there. And you only have one candle in a row and you have some bearish traders who are already trapped. Marlon says, but the SPY was a double bottom from a few weeks ago, right? That is correct. That's why I've been bullish on the market since April 6th. Yes. Aaron says, how do you determine whether to take the retest on the neckline versus at the neckline directly? Honestly, man, that's like me asking you, how do you pick what you're going to eat at night? Like, what are you going to have for dinner? I like, guess at some point you got to go, mm, I'm going to do this and then get in. On the previous chart, how do you decide whether to take the retest on the neckline versus the neckline retest directly? So in this one, I this is a long day candle. Right, that's a long day candle, so I'm gonna take a retest. This is a breakout, this is pressure building. You have four or five candles in a row of pressure building without going higher. This one, uh, let's do it a different color. This one with the pink arrow has already closed above the neckline. This one already closed. It already took out all of the shorts. Would you agree, Aaron? Everything is already closed out. Everything is already there. So when you have that candle comes in, you buy a pullback because it's a retest candle. It's a long candle. So you're buying a pullback. It's already closed with the neckline. The ones in green are building pressure. Like you already got the close and then it just builds and builds and builds and builds and doesn't go higher for like four or five minutes. You can absolutely take a breakout. But Aaron, the question you got to ask my man is, could you, simply be buying this area as a retest with a stop down here? And the answer is yes, you could be doing that. But I'm going to wait for a close above that because, uh, or sorry, I apologize. I'm going to be waiting for the break out of that neckline because it didn't actually close above it, right? The neckline would have been right here and this upper shadow did not close above that neckline. It threw in an upper shadow, but it didn't actually close above it. Make sense? Perfect. Also, this right here, fractalization of a double bottom. It's just a smaller time frame. Would you have taken the break out of that or a retest? Obviously, we could see that the breakout would have been the way to go, and that would have been the correct answer because that level was a retest of this double bottom neckline. <laughs> Oh man, it's so fun when you start really just compounding this stuff. It gets amazing. Do you guys see how long this class could have been if I taught all the chart patterns that I know? We're only on the first one. <laughs> we have it. It's either a good thing or a bad thing. I can't figure it out. So here's your five minute chart. And your five minute chart, Aaron, if you were looking at, hey, should I only take the retest of the breakout? Would you have gotten filled on a retest of the neckline? Ladies and gentlemen, on that double bottom. Here's the neckline. Would you have gotten filled? The answer is indeed. Ind indubitably. This right here, the short term retest. And then this one right here, the longer term retest. And that longer term retest broke down, you'd have gotten out of your longs and maybe flipped to a short because there was nothing holding it back until we get back down to that support level. Good, good stuff. So this is the same double bottom. Again, just a little bit zoomed out. Back on the one minute chart. Because what's really interesting is what do I spy up here? Any guesses? Mm, that's going to take us to the next chart pattern, the lower high double top. Are you telling me that you can do these both ways? Yeah, bro. Brohemian Rhapsody. That's right. 
Teddy Roosevelt, Brosif Stalin. This is a really nice double top. Now, how would you have known it's a double top? You wouldn't have known until this evening star and then that close below the neckline right there. It's the exact same pattern, just in reverse. Same exact thing. So this is a double top pattern. Uh, I love this pattern. It's amazingly, amazingly effective in day trading. I'm going to repeat that. The double top is way too effective in day trading, but people love finding these things on bigger time frames like daily or weekly charts, and they just short with their whole might because they think it's going to go to zero. They see a double top and they go, oh, this is it. It's going to go to zero. There's a double top. So we're going down. And again, that's not really the case. Double tops do go down, but they're not going to go to zero. It could. I'm not saying it won't go to zero, but I'm just saying it generally doesn't. You normally, if you're playing a double top, they're pretty quick oftentimes. Again, I love day trading them because it's a day trade. I can get in and get out. But on this particular one, Diego, the neckline is this little candle right here. Once that candle comes in, right? And you don't know it's a double top yet until this lower high comes in and you go, all right, we might turn into a double top if we close below the neckline, if. Really quick, just to break up the monotony, we're gonna get back to charts in just a second. If you have your phone or your computer or anything else, do us a little bit of a favor, smash the follow button on Facebook, Instagram, and or Twitter. Actually, all social media platforms, give us some love. We do our best to enrich lives. Be there or be a triangle. And you know what? I gotta bring this over here. Oscar. This came in eight seconds ago. So happy I finally pulled the trigger to be a part of real life trading after two years of sidelining myself. Everything I know about trading has come from the free instructional videos, free email reviews, and from other long-term trader named Corey, who is a truck driver. I like Corey a lot. He's a good friend of mine, Corey Jones. The positive culture, the readiness to always help one another, and the urge to continuously learn from everyone in the group is amazing. I'm going to finish my first real life trading month plus 9.34 hours. And I can't say how excited I am to be here. Now, again, for you watching this recording, you don't know, I have this on another screen that I came in 18 seconds ago. I'm multitasking. How great is that? Amazing. Look how active this community is. This is seven o'clock at night. And this guy says, I second this. Good old Russ. Thanks, man. You guys got to get in here. It's a really great spot. <laughs> Here's all the love coming. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're all amazing team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Matt says, and we have a virtual happy hour tonight. That's correct. I think that starts in an hour and a half. Menoir says, how do I get there? Matt will send you some links. All you got to do is join the trading rooms and you'll be a part of the team. Let's do this folks. I'm going to, I'm gonna pause the recording right there. I gotta use the bathroom. Or as Forrest Gump says, I gotta pee. I have been drinking water all day. I generally can hold it during any live event, but at this point I cannot. I'll be back in 120 seconds.
And I'm back. Okay. So recording person, let me get my clap. Richie says that was 118 seconds. I'm efficient, my friend. I'm efficient. All right. I'm going to walk you through the most profitable double top I've ever played for various reasons. I'll type in a one if you want to see me do this day by day. I'm going to kind of walk you through it, show you all exactly how I played this thing. Took a lot of notes. I remember precisely how it was done. So here's my notes. My notes are going to be on the right-hand side of the chart for right now. Up until this point, so when we're looking at this chart right here, it was business as usual on this stock. Nothing special. There's zero bearish news. Would you guys all agree? I mean, you can look at this. There is not one bearish signal that you can find on this chart. Now, obviously, you know what's coming because it's a double top. But <laughs> Here's the thing. It's just a huge bullish surge. This volume is massive. This volume is massive. And look at these volume spikes. These volume spikes over here are like, mm, it's a little parabolic. It's a little high. It's a little up there. Now, this is also a blue chip stock. So it can only go so high at some point. But I did not have dreams or visions of shorting the stock. I was not trying to call the top. It was just a stock that I looked at very frequently and it was up here. And when I looked at this chart, I said, yeah, guys, I don't know. I'm not buying here. Type in a seven into the chat pane. If that makes sense. I'm not buying here. That's all I said. I'm not going bearish. I'm not doing anything special. I'm simply just not buying. Okay. Now this candle comes in. Uh oh, we're about to ride the struggle bus. All the bears are hopping on the struggle bus. Now, is that the case? Not necessarily. When I saw this candle, I go, oh, that's cool. That's an interesting candle. Volume, eh, bearish. This candle pattern also came in near an all-time high. The trend is bullish. So when you have a bullish trend, a very strong bullish trend, it's extremely hard to play very nice bearish trades. They just happen so fast. Now, this stock was Verizon. You'll notice, and I talk about this, this is something that gets left out all the time in analysis, how high had Verizon already moved? In four and a half months, it went from $41 to $54. It's about a 28% increase in the stock price in four months. It seemed a little steep to me. So huge volume. This candlestick is called a one black crow. Wow, the attrition rate in this class right now is zero. Not one person has left. Let me try to spell that differently. One black crow. Man, you gotta be real careful spelling crow. <laughs> one black crock. That was one letter away from a real bad mistake. <laughs> Would have never lived that one down, but at least there was an R in there. So one black crow. That's what this particular chart pattern, this particular candlestick pattern, that's what this is called. A lot of volume. It's up there. It's near an all-time high. It's up there. All right. Now, Am I buying all the puts right now? Am I getting in short? Am I just loading the boat? Is this the boat loading? No. In hindsight, yeah, sure. <laughs> but maybe. Three or four days go by, and here, this is where I go, hmm. Is this the neckline of a double top? Is this, it? is this it? Is this all we're going to get? I mean, that is a close. That candle did close below a recent low. If we're calling this a neckline, we did close. We kind of closed right at it. Is this it? I was like, ah, maybe. I mean, there's definitely a lower high. But there is about four bearish candles in a row. Or I could at least say four relatively bearish candles in a row. So all I did, and this is what I do very well, is I did nothing. I simply said, let me give it one more day. Can anyone tell me why I said one more day based on something that's on the screen? 
It's a glaring, obvious thing. Super glaring. Really obvious. Hoff says, why wouldn't the neckline be the top of the high wave candle? It wouldn't be the top. So when you're playing um, double tops, you are breaking support. So support, Steve, is the low of those candles. Valid question. And Edward Lynn, Edward, you're gonna be one of my best traders, man. I hope you're ready to make a lot of money. He says volume. Look at that low volume. I mean, that's like the amount of girls that wanted to date me in high school. Not many. That is low volume. <laughs> the volume has since increased, but that at that point in time, pretty low volume. So I waited, right? It was, you're correct, Richie. <laughs> Still 4.5 million. I mean, I'm a very good looking guy. <laughs> but relative on this scale, right? Relative to how much volume is normally coming in on this one. Type in a one if you guys would agree. That's some pretty low volume. It's not really anything spectacular. It's really tiny. All I did was just let, hey, let me just wait one more day. That's all. Let me just give it one more day. And that's what one more day looks like. Bang! One more day comes in. I was like, man. Okay, so this is a bull candle. Good volume. And here's a takeaway. Here's what I do when I day trade. Here's what I do when I swing trade. If I'm looking for a bearish trade in a, an extremely bullish trend, I wait for a break below or a close below the most bullish candle because the trend is still bullish. So when this candle comes in, am I going long here? The answer is I could have, I could have, but remember, I wasn't going to go long right here. So right here is not much better. The risk reward's not yelling at me. Hey man, this is the greatest thing of all time. It's a little on the high side, so I'm just waiting. Could it be a double bottom? Sure could be. But am I gonna go in bullish on a double bottom up here? Mm, no, nah, probably not. Risk reward's just not that great. But it could, right? Here's the next few series of candles. Boom sauce. We get another strong bullish candle. Type in a seven into the chat pane if you can see the volume increasing nicely on that candle, right? Really good volume. And here's the thing, it's also a higher low. What do I mean by that? Look at this, look at this little trend. It's a higher low. I mean, it's a higher low relative to this low, higher low relative to this low. There's someone in the chat pane saying, dude, this is a double bottom, you should be getting in bullish. And I, that's what I thought the whole time. Like, well, apparently this is not going to go down. The only reason I'm not getting in bullish up here is because the risk reward was not fantastic. It just wasn't that great. So I waited. Okay. Next. And here is like where I just go, uh, Okay, well, apparently I'm just a moron. <laughs> so at this point, I'm not bearish at all. At all. But I'm not bullish. All right, I'm, I have no bearish positions at all. But I'm not getting in bullish either. So I'm waiting. Is this a double bottom? Yes, it is. There's one thing, however, that you might've noticed about the previous double bottoms. And that is this double bottom came in after one day of selling. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Do you like to see a little bit more than one day of selling before double bottom comes in? Any guesses? Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to get some candles, please. Excuse me, sir. Can I get some candles over here? I, I need more than just one candle. 
I want more than just one day of selling. Like, give me like a trend. Give, give me one of these guys, please. And then, okay, cool, double bottom. Now, these candles show up. Volume increasing. What's really cool here is at this level, you have a kind of an ugly evening star reversal pattern. Pretty ugly evening star reversal. Do we presently at this point in time have lower highs? And the answer is yes. So remember, this is not a scan. This is a stock that I just followed every day. And I said to myself, okay, if we take out these lower highs, I'm just gonna forego my campaign on this bullish trade. But if we hold and we start breaking down, uh, okay. Now what's interesting about this candle? This candle closes below the previous three days. It closes below the lower shadow of that very strong bullish candle. It closes below the low of that candle. And again, you definitely have a lower high. And let's be honest, type in a four into the chat pane if you think that there are people playing this long because that was a double bottom pattern. Yeah, so they could still be buying here. They could still be buying the retest. This could still be a buying event. I don't know yet. But if we start taking out this candle, this is the most bullish candle in the most recent event. This is the second most bullish candle. This is the third most recent. So if we take out both of those, there's gonna be something seriously going on here. Very next day, the very next day, bang. You gotta close below all of the bullish candles. Now, how many bear candles are in a row? Mm-hmm, four. Ladies and gentlemen, am I going to take a breakout or am I going to try to get in on a retest? I'm going to try to get in on a retest. Do we retest? Yes, we do. Does the volume increase? Yes, it does. Do we now close below the neckline for sure? Yes, we do. Is this a confirmed double top? Yes, it is. Now, does that mean it's gonna work? <laughs> oh, that's funny. But it means we could try, depends. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but I know my risk. Richie says, does this signify a change to a distribution phase? Yes, it does. Someone was listening to last night's class. Well done. So as soon as this pattern comes in, I'm now thinking, all right, we're in a distribution phase. We're gonna start trading sideways because we got that lower high with volume increase that we talked about yesterday. B pro, <laughs> B bro pro says after an indecision candle, we don't know what's gonna happen. That's true, it's very true. What I did right now on this particular trade is uh, I bought some puts when we retested with that upper shadow. When we pulled back, I bought some puts because that was the retest. We pulled back up into the previous candle. Right, the, the neckline at that point was, is, was the lows of these bullish candles. Remember, that's what I said. If we take out the low of these bullish candles, remember a double top is the exact same thing as double bottom and in reverse. 
If you take out the lows of those really strong bullish candles, that's the bearish neckline. It's the exact opposite for a double bottom. You're gonna take out the highs of the most bearish candle. So I'm in on this trade with some puts. What do I do here? Now, remember, this is called the most profitable double top I've ever played. So yeah, I waited. I was like, okay. This is the retest. If you were not in, are you getting in now? Diego says, where's the neckline? Sorry, man. I thought I just drew that. I apologize. I'll, I'll do that again. Neckline right here. That is it. So did we retest? Yes, we did. If you're going to get in, where? There. Do you know if it's going to roll over? No, you don't. Could it roll over? Yes. But if it doesn't, then you're going to lose. Okay. So the next candle that came in, this is a bearish candle. It's an inside day candle. It's an indecision spinning top candle. Volume is low. We are now resting. Something could happen. So what does good old Jeremy Newsom do on this particular trade? Beep, beep, beep. Pull over. Can you pull in the boat? If we take out the low of this candle, is there anything really stopping this double top from potentially working? The answer is no. So I'm, I'm getting my boat ready to fill it with cash and buy a lot of puts. Sometimes you got to risk money to make money. Someone once told me that. So I know my risk going into the trade. I'm okay knowing my risk going into the trade. I have a bearish indecision candle. Bang. That's what a few thousand dollars look like. Diego says, where is your risk? It's above the most recent high. Highs up here, stops up there. Just like on a double top. Just like on a double top, if we get above there, I know I'm not gonna be right on the trade. Now, do you bail right here? Is this where you get out? The answer is, yeah. Absolutely. This is where you get out of some. Yep. This is where you take some partials off the position. Because remember, I load the boat. So now I'm starting to unload the boat a little bit. If I have a lot of risk on the position, I'm lowering the risk, taking some profits. I bought a lot of June 52 puts on this position, which is a bearish trade, which makes money if it goes down. Off says, why not make the stop loss the break above the neckline? You can, man, but it's just, it's just called the trim and trail. <laughs> the trim and trail, it's, it's up to you. I'll let you kind of do whatever you want. There's no specific right or wrong answer on how you manage. I just kind of get out as it makes lower lows. I peel some positions off. And then I lower the stop a little bit. And then I hold more. So I'm in the trade. It looks good. Volume is coming in. We're making lower highs. I'm exiting some of my puts. I'm lowering my stop from the red line. As Steve mentioned, I'm going to take my stop down and I'm going to put it down here in the black line. Kelly says, do you use stops on your options? Yes, I do. So I'm lowering the stop on the options, as I've been mentioning, and shaved bottom candle. We talked about shaved bottom candles recently. The low is pretty close. Close. I'm gonna take some profits here as well. 
We do close below the low of the previous candle, but this is a shaved bottom candle. Shaved bottom, which means all of the selling is happening towards the end of the day. And then you get a gap down the next day, huge upper shadow, massive flush lower, and then extreme shave bottom again. So on that particular day, huge volume comes in, shave bottom candle, who exits everything right there at the, at the end of the day? I do. Why do I exit? Because people are piling in bearish. And then the next day, that candle comes in. And then it did this. That was it. That was the whole move. That move was over in four or five days. Most traders will hold a double top play way too long. Way too long. Edward says, how many R's? Full confession, this was a little bit before I started trading R's. <laughs> I wasn't fully aware of risks like units and I made enough to buy a house in cash. I bought a lot of puts. <laughs> yeah. No, was that a good thing? Uh, not necessarily, but there were times back in the day where I knew to kind of push in the chips a little bit. You know, I was like, there are times where you got to go. Yeah. And you kind of you, you push in some chips. There are times there are still times to do that. I'm not saying I played this correctly, but this was technically the most profitable double top I've ever had. Chris says, you said you like poker. That is true. So at this point, man, I had pocket kings and I had a king on the flop with a nine and a seven. So I, I, I don't know, man, I put in some money. Let's talk continuation patterns. Continuation patterns are wonderful if you're in a trade. They can absolutely be trade, played and taken if you're not already in. And oftentimes they occur over two to eight candles represented by your time frame. So if you're on the daily chart, it could be two to eight days, weekly chart, two to eight weeks, five minute candle, two to eight minutes. Jason says, we actually had a futures trader in real life trading make $100,000 in one day. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, the amount of money that can be made in the market is ridiculous. I mean, you can make as much money as you want. You just have to know your risk and understand how it's played. Let me bring this over really quick. Are you guys able to see the screen? Daniel Rovner, I'm taking tomorrow off to do my volunteer work. 13 and a half hours for April. 13 and a half hours. I mean, that is solid. That's like, that's life changing money. Man. So here we go. Continuation patterns. Here's three. You could also call them mashed potato dances. Benoit says I have to be a paying member to get on Slack. That is correct. Sometimes you got to pay for stuff in life. Someone once told me that. Yeah, man. Sometimes you got to pay for things in life. Continuation patterns, flags, pennants, stair steps, also mashed potato dance. Doesn't really matter the name, it matters the sentiment. Here's a bull flag. Here's three of them, and I'm gonna kind of draw them for you. Now, these take practice to see, I promise, I was told the same thing when I started learning these that you're not gonna be able to see them at first, but if you start spending enough time in front of the charts, you'll eventually see them. Flag patterns like a sloping direction. These are bare flags. So do you guys kind of see how you have a specific drop and then you have a little bit of a counter trend move for a few days and then it continues? Here's my thoughts on flag patterns. 
These are retracements that go against the grain of the trend. They're usually scary and can be wonderful for stopping out aggressive stop movers. Flags show up all the time. They are natural and needed. They allow the trend to rest. If I see a flag pattern and notice the trend to continue, I'm able to hold the trade longer. Let me repeat that one more time. If I see a flag pattern and I notice the trend continue, I will hold the trade longer. Let me do that one again. <laughs> if I see a flag pattern and notice the trend continue, I will hold the trade longer. A lot of people ask the question, how do you hold winning trades? This is one way. If I'm in a trade, and let's just say hypothetically, I get in here for whatever reason, and I see a flag pattern or what might be a flag pattern form, and then it starts making a higher high, do I hold the trade longer? Do I try to hold the trade longer? Do I attempt to stay in this trade longer? And the answer is yes. Because I go, okay, cool. That was a flag pattern, AKA mashed potato dance. And it makes sense to me that this trend could continue because it's a continuation pattern. And I wanna make money because I love money and money loves me and I wanna do great things with money. So I'm gonna to try to hold this trade. Greg says, that's been my issue. Knowing when to flex the holding muscle. There's one of your answers, ma'am. Wait for a flag to come in. And when the flag comes in and then it moves higher, start flexing. Christopher says, how often do you see a flag pattern develop? All the time. How many candles? Two to eight, or whatever time frame. Sandra says, do you add to your position? No, I do not. The less continuation patterns I see and hold my position through, the faster I'll exit. Greg Gilbert, let me read that to you again. The less continuation patterns that I see and notice and hold through, the faster I'll exit. So if I get into a trade here and it just does this, am I gonna exit, ladies and gentlemen, yes or no? And the answer is yes, I will. Bloop, I'm out, taking my bank, thank you. Now, if I get into a trade here and it does one of these guys, will I try to hold for more just in case? And the answer is yes, because that could be a flag pattern, AKA the S curve. Steven says, what time frame? Any time frame, two to eight candles. All right, here's the next continuation pattern. This is a, called a pennant pattern. These are more rare than flags. Flags happen all the time. These are generally not scary at all. I like it when pennant patterns show up. This happened on Roku a few, a few days ago. We were in a trade, a really nice pennant pattern form. They're really not scary because they generally, generally don't make lower lows. They just kind of hang out. They just kind of bounce around and don't do anything for a while. And you just have to wait. So you see some lows come in and you see some lower highs come in and they just don't really do anything. And then they kind of break out higher. So if I see a pennant pattern that breaks out and holds, AKA a small distribution phase on a small time frame. The thing is far too many noobs take the breakout of pennant patterns. They look for pennant patterns and they can also be a profitable endeavor but a lot of pennant patterns will retrace and they will retest. So when I see a pennant pattern, I don't add to my position. I don't do anything special. I let them break out. I let them retest. And then I start moving my stop just like normal. I sit on my hands. I go, oh, that's cool. A pennant pattern is forming. If this continues in the direction, then I'm gonna keep holding the trade. Jason says a lot of trading companies will tell you to do this, take the breakout of the pennant pattern. Yes, they do. And again, they just retest a lot, a lot of the time these things retest. So don't take the breakout, take the retest. So here's a few pennant patterns. Again, they're really, really cool. And they, again, you can play breakouts. They do work. 
this is the example that people will tell you, hey, take this breakout. Look how great, look how much money you would have made. And yeah, you're right. You would have made a lot of money. Diego, give me 10 seconds. So this is the breakout of this pendant pattern. Is this the retest of that pendant pattern, ladies and gentlemen? And the answer is yes. And you were all correct. Everyone who's throwing in a Y into the chat pane. So this other pennant pattern right here, if this is the breakout of the pennant pattern, is this the retest of the pennant pattern? The answer is yes. Chris says, do they usually break out in the direction of the trend? They're supposed to. That's why they are called continuation patterns. If they do not, that's where you have a problem. They're supposed to. So if I have a pennant pattern that breaks out in the opposite direction, I kind of move on. Ellis says, is that retest also a flag pattern? You're 100% right. It definitely is. And really, I can draw these however I want. <laughs> well, I can draw these and say, oh, look at this flag pattern. Like I can create kind of whatever narrative I want to with these continuation patterns because they're really so small and tricky. By the way, type in a 14 if you see a few double bottoms in here as well, it could have been played. And a few double tops, they could have been played. Yeah. I see a few. Look at this double top over here. Man. Good, what a good close below that neckline. A lot of really cool patterns, a lot of really cool chart patterns in this one. Okay, my friends, on this particular chart, do you see the pennant pattern? Kelly says yes. Nice, Kelly. Well done. Manoir says yes. Edward says yes. Lucian says yes. Good. Sorry, I thought there was an arrow coming. There was not. This is the pennant pattern right here. Three days, that's it. You got a gap. It was a three day pennant pattern and then it continued and it did break out. And you could have taken the breakout, but there was a reason that that one was a good one to play the breakout of. It's not, do you take a breakout or do you take a retest of patterns? My friends, it's why do you do it? And this one was very obvious. You had a lot of bearish volume. Then you had an inside candle. Then you had a third inside candle with a little bit of an upper shadow. The pressure was building. So this one, you could have taken a breakout because volume, ton of people trapped, tons of pressure building. It made sense to take a breakout. That's okay. So here's a chart. Let's go through all... Let's go through and count all the possible continuation patterns we can find. Here we go. Uh, flag pattern, you could call that a pennant pattern. Definitely something there with red. And I'm probably gonna miss some. Here's a double bottom. That double bottom looks really nice. So inside the double bottom, you get pennant pattern right here. And when that pennant pattern comes in, it breaks higher and continues higher makes a new high, that's where I'm selling if I play the double bottom correctly. Then with a double, then turns into a double top, close all the neckline, get a really gnarly retest. Gap down, turns into a stair step or pennant pattern. Could call it a flag pattern. We trade lower, all of this becomes a flag pattern and we get another gap down. Turns into a stair step pattern, which is a sideways move and then that breaks down where this becomes some kind of weird flag pattern thing, stair step pattern thing, big flag pattern thing, new lows, big breakout, flag pattern, stair step pattern, pennant pattern, flag pattern, stair step pattern, pennant pattern that broke down against the trend. That's a little bit of a warning signal. So that pin and pattern did not break higher. That would have made, I would have gotten out for sure, somewhere right around there. 
Trade continues, continues. No real pattern right here. Not a continuation pattern because we're just trading into old support, new resistance. Gapped up. There's your pennant pattern, two-day pennant pattern, followed by a stair step pattern. Now we're at resistance. Let me try to draw that resistance line a little bit better. Hashtag track pack is life. Trackpad life. Uh, no real continuation patterns because we're not continuing the trend. We broke out, made higher highs, flag pattern, and then boom. Final pattern is a stair step. What's the stair step pattern? Burn on out, burn on out. Stair step pattern, my favorite of the continuation patterns. These happen often and they're not scary at all. And I actually do love playing breakouts on these. I am a fan. The longer this pattern trades sideways, the better the breakout can be. It's a high probability continuation pattern and I love trading them. I love finding them and I love holding through these. If I can hold through a stair step pattern, whew, man, I feel like an absolute champion. They're so good. And they're really generally not scary, scary, scary at all. So on this particular chart, can you find a or the stair step pattern? What are you guys saying? Can you see them? I'm gonna highlight them. Now we got some over here. Yep, definitely some stair step patterns there. A little bit of a stair step pattern there. This is kind of like a flag pattern. Again, you could call this, you could definitely call this a flag. This is not really a stair step. This is definitely a flag because you have that lower high that came in. Lower high, flag, pennant pattern looking thing. Then we start breaking down, trend starts changing. You got this really good support line that starts breaking down. Break, 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 boom, stair step pattern. Break, 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 boom, stair step pattern. And then it turns into what phase of the market, Matt DeLong? Accumulation. How would we have known that starts in accumulation? Huge volume comes in, immediate bullish candle that traps all that volume, accumulation is beginning. Bang. Draw some support resistance, start buying low, selling high, and accumulating. How easy is this stuff? Rinse and repeat. It's as hard or as easy as you want it to be. It's as hard, as easy as you make it. Christopher says, so stair step is just a consolidation. That is correct. Yep. Just a little miniature, small consolidation. Consolidation just means, consolidation is just a word for not a lot of movement in a specific direction. This is a trend. Anything other than that, up or down, is a consolidation. Consolidations happen all the time. Christopher says, that's good because pressure is building. You answered your own question. Yes, sir. All right. In this particular chart, can you find some stair step patterns? Yeah, there's a few of them in here. This is a beauty. Love that one. Look at that. Oh, so good. Really, really nice. Look at this tiny one. Two day, two day, a little, uh, little pattern right there, stair step that actually broke down bearish. A little tiny miniature double top up there. Uh, let me bust out the drawing tool. Flag pattern. Starts trading sideways. Another flag pattern that actually broke down. This is a bearish stair step pattern that turned into a trap and all the bears got hosed and started losing money all because of a double bottom pattern that came in. So we started retesting the neckline, traded down and they all got stopped out. Big, big move, all new highs, pennant pattern. Big trade up, pennant pattern. Huge, huge candle. Tons of volume at a new high selling spot.
Chris says, what should we look for in this pattern? Stair steps, just really, really small, tight, consolidated ranges. Like this one right here. Really tight, small, consolidated ranges. Double bottom. Yeah, just really nice looking, tight, small ranges, man. They're really, really fun. Um, so here's crude, crude oil. Let's go practice some of our patterns that we've learned tonight on crude. Here's a double top. Beautiful pattern there. Here's a double bottom. Look how perfect that double bottom is. Look at that small bearish high wave candle right at the neckline. What a great place to take a breakout. Oh my goodness. Another double top chart pattern with a close of the neckline and a retest. How beautiful. Again, this is the daily chart. You get you a double bottom here, which is actually interesting because it's a little bit of a larger double bottom like this, which both of those actually works. It doesn't matter which one you traded. Both of those worked out well. Possible double bottom, higher, low double bottom came out over here. This is a flag pattern. Mm, I mean, there's so many cool patterns in here. So many great charts. This is definitely a flag. Look at that. Beautiful flag pattern after the double top. Big double top. Big one. Big one, big one, big one. Big double top, big close with the neckline. Really good. Was this a nice retest of the neckline right here? That lower bullish candle, good pullback into that area. Yeah, that was gorgeous. Really pretty. So here's what Jason Smith said in the chat pane. He says, one thing that helps me is find a good charting software that has an instant replay mode where you can hide the candles and then go step by step each candle and assess what pattern might be forming and then set up your trading plan. I 100% agree with Jason. So if you want to do that, that's what we do in this course, uh, the back trading marathon course. It's six hours long. It's intense. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. You should absolutely snag it. If you're on the website, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this from anywhere, go to reallifetrading.com, check it out. It's a really beautiful program if you want to practice. Steve says, which charting software is good to do that? Steve, have you ever heard of a company called TradingView? Steve says, yes, beautiful. Use that one. <laughs> there you go. All right. So boys and girls, I want to help you avoid some of these mistakes. Write these mistakes down, please. Take a screenshot, print this chart out. I'm going to help you. We still have two modules left. Can you believe that? Two of these left. Kelly says, does this course work for any type of trading like Forex and futures? I don't know if you've noticed Kelly, but five of these charts tonight were on Forex and futures. So I hope that answers your question. So avoid these mistakes. Noob mistake number one, always expecting a stock to drop and go lower when it's in a nice uptrend. If a stock's in a nice uptrend, just be bullish. Keep playing it bullish until you lose. And if you lose four times, it's probably not bullish anymore. Simple as that. Just be bullish. Right, Robin? <laughs> that was what I told Robin. That was, I love Robin to death. And that's how I knew she was a noob. She came to me and she said, Hey, Jeremy, look at this trade that I took. Why did it not work? And she was buying puts on a stock that was just screaming higher. I'm like, because it's in a bullish trend. She's like, yeah, but it's got to go lower at some point. And I go, when? She goes, I don't know. I go, me neither. So why don't you just go along? You would have made more money the whole time. <laughs> but the cool news is Robin is now an absolute savage of the support line. She is a phenomenal trader. All because she slowly removed that piece of her trading and now she's done phenomenal. 
Robin says that was an accurate description of what our conversation was. <laughs> Pretty much. Ladies and gentlemen, new mistake number two. Always expecting a stock to go higher, break out and surge higher when it's in a downtrend. Right? So when a stock's doing this, and you're like, oh, I'm going to buy it because it's nice and cheap. I have someone saying Boeing. Um, I would not say Boeing's in a long-term downtrend. Personally. I'll say it's in a short-term downtrend for sure, in an intermediate downtrend for sure, but long-term, no. Just my opinion. Chris says, like me on UCO. Exactly, like you on UCO. All right, so if a stock, if a stock chart looks like this, don't buy it down here and expect it just rampage higher. That's a noob mistake. Wait for some signals, wait for some volume, wait for some gaps, wait for some analysis, give it some time. Just because it's going lower does not make it a good thing. If you want to call the bottom on something and you want to practice on it, trade with me in one of my trading rooms and I'll help you because I am not a noob and I will tell you if it's a good time to do that or not, all right? Because I love Chris Stanley to death, but he and I both know that he played UCO entirely opposite of the way we talked about in class. <laughs> but I love you, Chris, but it's okay. Hey, we have to pay, we have to make some mistakes, right? We gotta make some mistakes, we gotta learn. We gotta make some mistakes. New mistake number three, not trusting the trend. Are you starting to notice a pattern? Kelly says, I'm in the number three category. Hey, it's okay. Hey, trust me, it happens so many times. One of the most powerful things, and I can't remember what book it was. I really can't. One of the most powerful things I've ever seen was Paul Tudor Jones had a chart that looked like this in some book. I forget what the book is. And Paul Tudor Jones, which you should all know who that person is. If you don't, you have not been trading long enough. He's a extremely wealthy billionaire hedge fund manager, one of the best in the world at what he does. And there is a chart, like page two of this random book that I can't remember. And it had this exact drawing and it says, what do you think is about to happen next? So go ahead and type it into the chat pane. What do you guys think is about to happen next? And if you said anything other than go up, keep practicing. You're a noob. <laughs> Sorry, if you said anything other than go up, why would it not continue doing that? Over, you don't have any other piece of data. You have no other insight at all. None. So what makes you think this is gonna do anything other than that, you know? Russ says Newton's first law. Yeah, pretty much. And that's kind of what Paul Tudor Jones said in that chart. It's like, guys, if you said anything other than go up, you're not ready to be an investor or a trader because you have no other evidence, no other pieces of information or intel to determine what it's going to do. All right, new mistake number four, buying all-time high breakouts. Don't do that. Oh, Jeremy, but it's going to go higher. Yeah, it could, but just buy the pullback. Don't get it. You, you can say you can buy the exact same price a week and a half later and not have to worry about the heartache of waiting for the retracement. And then same exact thing. New mistake number five, shorting the all-time low or 52-week low breakdowns, especially on blue chip stocks.
What's the blue chip stock? It's a stock that pays dividends. If it's a really strong, powerful company, don't short. All time lows or 52 week low breakdowns. Just avoid that mistake altogether. If you can avoid those five mistakes, you have a really good shot at making a lot of money trading. Here's one huge secret. And I will repeat this again. The only thing that can be can confirmed is the trend. Volumes, candles, and sentiment will guide us to our injuries and exits. They will help us understand the, when should I get in? Why should I be getting in here? How do I get into this trade? Where should I get into this trade? These two, I can help you with very frequently. But you wanna properly answer these questions and make as much money as you want, understanding that the trend is gonna be the key aspect to all of this. All this, the key aspect is, what is the trend? So let's go look at two quick examples, INSG and DEAC. These are two that were requested um, in an email. INSG and Seago Corporation. All right. So if we're looking at Insego Corporation, type in a four if you can see a double top that happened relatively recently. Okay, now did the stock go to zero? No, it did not, but it did go lower. Cool. So at what point could you have been a little bit bullish on this trade? Well, somewhere around here, most likely. But if we're looking at this particular chart, just, just looking at this particular trend right here, are we gonna short this, yes or no? The answer is no. Could we short it? The answer is absolutely we could, but the trend right now is bullish. It just, it is a bullish trend on this particular time frame. Let's go to a monthly chart. On a monthly chart, does it look like it's working on breaking out and making higher highs and higher lows with good volume? The answer is yes. Okay. So this simply says to me, doesn't mean that you can't make money on the downside. It just says, why try to be the hero and short up here and make a little bit of money? Why not be the person who buys down here and catches the pullback? Do you know if it's gonna bounce? Absolutely not, never do. But why not attempt to be that person? Do you have any idea how many people are making insane money right now on Tesla? because I had this exact drawing on my screen for the last month, this exact drawing. I drew this exact wave count, this exact setup, uh, April 8th or 9th, I think. Which stipulated, let it trade up higher, be extremely bullish, let it chop around, trade sideways, buy the dip, and then stay in long for a new high. Because that tr that's the trend. What's the trend on Tesla? Let's go look at the weekly chart. You guys tell me. Trend, up. Okay, it's easier to go with the bullish trend. The other one that was requested in email was DEAC. DEAC, I have no idea what this is. Is it DEAC or DAEC? DAEC? Oh, someone gave me a stock that has no ticker. Lame. Just trying to help out some people who emailed. Um, okay. ST&E, sure. You got it. Someone's requesting ST&E, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So we're gonna go to a weekly chart really quick. Weekly chart, what is the trend? This is all the data that we have on ST&E, Stone Cold Steve Austin. What is the trend, ladies and gentlemen, on Stone Cold Steve Austin? Sideways, that's absolutely correct, which means boring, probably not gonna trade it. Roku, what is the trend on Roku? This is a weekly chart. What's the trend on Roku? Bullish. Kelly says, spy, spy is easy. No need to look at spy, it's obviously bullish. Nvidia, even easier. What's the trend on Nvidia? 
bullish. Right. I mean, just find the trend, stick with the trend, play the pullbacks. Do you see a massive weekly double bottom? Do you see a retest of that neckline on the double bottom? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're doing great. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your questions. I hope you continue to enrich lives with us and continue to go through the program with us. It's been a serendipitously splendid uh, itinerary. Jose says, today I learned that I have no clue. That's all right. If you feel lost, why don't you trade with us? Why don't you pop in for a month, two months and just be part of the community. See if it helps you. See if it gives you guidance or assistance. And if you are a part of Real Life Trading, you can log into our virtual meetup in the next 24 minutes and do our virtual happy hour. Menoir says, guide me to join your Real Life Trading website. All right, Menoir, I can do that. Here we go. Menoir, open up a browser. Let me know when you got your browser opened up. Jose says, how's running going? Man, it's going great. It's going really good. So Menoir, let me know when you got your browser opened. Ladi says, refund satisfaction easy, question mark. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'll put it to you this way. I handle any refunds. What do you think? <laughs> so yeah, of course, it's really, if you, if you sign up for something you don't like it, I'll just give you your money back. So I don't, it's, it's really simple. Menoir, still waiting on you. Amy says, do you still have a lot of running to do tonight? Yes, I have about 10 miles I got to knock out tonight, but that'll be easy. Menoir says, I'm getting on my other computer. All right, so we're going to wait on Menoir. We're going to walk him through how to sign up for Real Life Trading because he's all excited about it. Uh, in the meantime, I'll answer any other questions that you have. Amy says, Cameron, who's your son, says, you must have a lot of soul with all the running that you do. <laughs> either, I, either I have a lot of soul or I have no soul. One of the two. <laughs> Christopher says, you must sleep very well. I try to, yeah. Marlon Brandbro Blevins says, you will not be asking for your money back. Ladi says, one year learning and you make the most sense. Oh, thank you. No, I appreciate that, ma'am. Um, I'll do my absolute best to help out as much as I can. And I don't know. I think it's a lot of opportunity for people to grow together as a team and a community. Alex says, can you trade bearish on Robinhood? Yes, you can. Menoir says, I am in. All right, perfect. So do this for me, Menoir. Type in reallifetrading.com. Real life. Real life trading. Now, if you guys want to follow these steps, you're welcome to. There's still 93 people here. All right. So now click on live trading. And I'll explain each one of these. If you are more of a day trader, Menoir, uh, we charge $249 for a day trading room access uh, along with access to the Slack channel. So realistically, if you have $30,000 or more in your account, it's an absolute no brainer. That's like the easiest investment of all time. So there's that. Lot A says, what is the Slack channel? That's the uh, thing that we were talking about earlier. That's this. Oh, we just had someone join. Nice. We just had someone sign up right now. So this is the Slack channel right here. This is where Everyone gets access to, everyone's chatting, talking at night, meeting friends, hanging out with people. Yeah, so great question. Edgar says, I wish I could day trade, but I have a day job. Beautiful. So for the people that have a day job, here's the afternoon swing trading room. This is $1.99 a month. So you can access the live 
trading room that I host every single day from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Now, what do you guys think? Type in a two into the chat pane if you think I record that program. Of course, if it was not recorded, it'd be a really bad program. <laughs> Let's be honest. It'd be really, really bad. So yeah, the afternoon swing trading room is $199 a month. Uh, honestly, if you have a $10,000 account or more, then that's a no-brainer. And then there's one other way that you can get access to a lot of the trade picks, hand-fed trades that I do. Uh, weekly options newsletter is $99 a month. I'm unable to go back in time and click on this and show you what a previous weekly options newsletter was. But I will tell you that a previous weekly news option was Carnival. Um, we bought call options on Carnival on that day. How cool is that? So if you're, if you're in that subscription, if you're in that model, um, call options is a bullish trade, right? You're expecting it to go up in value. And that one trade right now probably netted you somewhere over $2,500, give or take. So really good consolidation phase, really good breakout, really good move. And it's going to go a little bit higher tomorrow. So Noir says, well, I'll be getting that in an email. Yep, I email that out every Tuesday. But you can also just log in and access it. This is what your account looks like if you are a member. So if you are a member and you do join a real life trading, you don't even have to pay anything, you'll get a dashboard. So every single one of you has access to this where you can get all kinds of cool free stuff. Look at that, real life trading kids program. I bet you guys got kids who wanna learn this stuff. Kids program, this is free, this is free, this is all free. And there's some premium stuff. If you wanna spend money on some things and get some money, you can get some things. Every one of you here gets your own dashboard. And what's crazy is this is not even a sales pitch. You guys asked me to do this. This is not, I don't have any slides on any of this. <laughs> You're the ones that asked. So I love sales. I'm a great salesperson, but I'm just letting you all know that I don't have to. And Mar says, how do I get going? So when you click on one of these, Let's say, for example, Menoir, you click on the $249 a month. It's going to take you to your dashboard. You pay. Menoir says, I've already paid. Then you are going, my good friend. You'll be in Slack in any second. You're going to get a Slack invite. You'll be popping in and you'll be here any moment. Well done. High five. How easy is that? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome another trader to the RLT family, Menoir. Excited to see you and hang out with you, my friends. It's going to be great. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your energy. I am so excited for you all to be here. Thank you. This is an opportunity to be together, to help out, to grow. Steve says, what is an R? Steve, you're going to want to pop over to the beginners program where I will be more than happy to walk you through all of that the very strong, massively gorgeous, basic concepts of trading. So go to your, my account and your dashboard and come down here and click on the uh, beginners course and go crush it, my man. Crush them, crush them, crush them. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, team, friends, family from around the entire world. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to be back. Lydia says, chatting room or talking? I'm not entirely sure what that means, but both. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really sure, but I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be both. Team, you are wonderful. Thank you for being here. Lydia says, will we see you? Yes, ma'am, I'm always there. Always helping, always around. Mm hmm. Nathan says, thanks, Jay. You're welcome. My absolute pleasure. 
Thanks guys, I'm out. I'll see you all later. For those of you who are here, this is module three. Type in a one if you remember, there is a module four and there is a module five. Come back, I'll see you. And until next time, which is approximately 22 hours from now, love life, live life and trade it by.